From Hollywood, California, the Lux Radio Theater presents Cary Grant and Gene Arthur in Only Angels Have Wings. Lux presents Hollywood. This program is our way of thanking you for your loyalty to Lux Flakes. Every time you purchase a box of Lux Flakes, you're playing an active part in making this program possible. And every time you buy a box of Lux Flakes, you're assuring safe, thrifty care for your nice things. For everything safe in water alone. Because Lux has no harmful alkali to fade colors or spoil fabrics. It keeps your things new looking longer. That's worth remembering, isn't it? Lux is safe, and it saves. Tonight, we take you to South America in a play of high adventure, of romance and melodrama, in bringing you Cary Grant, Gene Arthur, Thomas Mitchell, Richard Bartholmus, and Rita Hayworth in Only Angels Have Wigs. The music of the Lux Radio Theater is conducted by Louis Silvers, and between the acts, you'll hear Arthur E. Laporte, captain of the plain Yankee Clipper, just returned from its history-making flight to Europe. And now, here is your host and producer, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. During the past week, Columbia Pictures Corporation released to the world a photo play which, in my opinion, will be regarded as one of the finest adventure dramas of all time. Critics and audiences alike already have confirmed this opinion, and the picture is destined for a long and successful run. It's called... Only angels have wings. <laughs> For making it possible to bring this drama to the air, our thanks go to Columbia Studios, director Howard Hawks, and the brilliant players who were about to reenact the roles they so recently created. Especially since Gene Arthur and Thomas Mitchell, in order to be here this week, interrupted work on their next Columbia picture, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. This play we're doing tonight does more than star Cary Grant, Gene Arthur, and Thomas Mitchell. It brings back an old favorite and introduces a new one. It only angels have wings. A great personality of past seasons reappears on the screen for the first time in three years. We're proud and delighted to include among our principals tonight, Richard Barthelmas. And our newcomer is a beautiful and talented young actress, Rita Hayworth, whom you hear in the role of Judy McPherson. Mr. Barthelmas is Bat McPherson, Jean Arthur plays Bonnie Lee, Thomas Mitchell is the flyer called The Kid, and Cary Grant, who stars next for RKO in Memory of Love, takes the part of Jeff Carter. And also from the original cast, Nor Barry Jr., Victor Killian, and Donald Barry. Only Angels Have Wings was not written with any thought of the occasion which this nation observes tomorrow, Memorial Day. And yet when you've heard our drama, I think you'll agree that it's in the spirit of America's Day of Remembrance, since it tells the story of the sacrifice and daring of those who made it safe for man to fly. Now we take off. Raise the curtain and begin the play. The Lux Radio Theater presents Cary Grant and Gene Arthur in Only Angels Have Wings with Thomas Mitchell, Richard Bartholmus, and Rita Hayworth. Night has fallen in the, on the little town of Barranca, port of call for South American banana boats. Near the waterfront, the fog hangs low over the muddy, narrow streets. And in the garish light of kerosene lamps, the natives swarm through the marketplace. Jammed in the crowd is a young American girl. She pushes her way quickly through the streets, glancing frequently over her shoulder at two men who have been following her. In desperation, she stops by a peddler's stand, snatches up a butcher's knife, and turns to face her two pursuers. You. All right, gents. Step right up and be carved into small pieces. Lady, we've decided to appeal to your better nature. What? It wasn't me wanting to follow you, lady. This guy thought it up all by himself. We just wanted to buy you a drink. Are you American? Oh, don't no, let the clothes fool you, lady. Oh, I thought you were a couple of... Well, why didn't you say so? Gee, Winnickers, am I glad to see you. You buy me a drink, I'll buy you a drink. Uh, you won't need this knife anymore. <laughs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> sure sounds good to hear something that doesn't sound like pig Latin. Where are you from? Oh, he's Les Peters, and I'm Joe Salter. New York and Kansas. What's your name? Lee. Lee what? Bonnie Lee from Brooklyn. Hiya, Bonnie. <laughs> I didn't hear Bonnie. <laughs> hey, Jen. Where's Dutchie? All behind the bar. Come on, Bonnie. 
Hey, Dutchie. Hello, Joe. Hello, Les. Hey, you bring the mail from the boat? Sure. And something with it. Oh, Dutchie, meet Miss Lee. How do you do? How are you? Miss Lee, this imposing gentleman known as Dutchie, is postmaster and leading banker of Bronca. Well, I've always wanted to know, postmaster. Well, also the owner of the general store on your right. And chief cook and bottle washer of the luxurious hotel and restaurant you see before you. John Van Reiter is the name, Miss Lee. Please don't pay any attention to that. <laughs> How about a drink, Dutchie? Oh, sure, sure. Uh, sit down. Make yourself at home. Cigarette money? Thanks. Feels good to be off that boat. Say, what are you looking at? What's the matter with me? Nothing. Only you're sure easy on the eyes. No, go on, you mug. You heard me use that two weeks ago. <laughs> well, sounds, sound, still sounds good anyway. What are you fellas doing down here? Uh, just the same as everybody else. Working for the Dutchman. What's that? Oh, we fly a little mail and things here and there. Flies? I was wondering what you were wearing those guns for. You think we're a couple of those banana cowboys? Now, who'd ever think there was a flying field in this place? Where is it? Just outside the door. Outside the door? Must be pretty small. Well, it's bigger than a postage stamp. Operation office behind that door. Hanger in the cow shed out that way. Hmm. Very high class. Oh, sure. Uh, here you are, Miss Lee. <laughs> Thanks, Dutchie. Well, score, hmm? To us. Down the hatch. Happy landing. <laughs> what are you doing down here, Miss Lee? On your way back to the States? Yes, if I don't get a job in Panama. Oh, oh professional? Yeah, I could have show it. They'll cry so. Uh, what time does your boat leave again? 4 a.m., so they tell me. 4 a.m.? Uh, hey, Dutchie, bring a bottle, will you? No, 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 no. You boys better go easy. What for? Well, one of you has to fly the mail tonight. I thought Tony was first out. Well, Tony has a touch of fever. It'll be either you or Joe. Oh, can you beat that? Yeah, fine thing. All right, Dutchie. Take a number. A number? What for? Anything I... to ten. One to ten. Oh, no, 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 not me. If you want to gamble on who is going up in bad weather, you better pick somebody else for a number, not me. All right. Mm. Funny. Any number. Go ahead, anything up to ten. No, sirree, not me. I feel the same way he does. No, nobody's worrying about who's going up. What we're worrying about is who who's is... Who's going to take you to dinner? Yeah. <laughs> now, who said anything about staying for dinner? Well, we'll send you a formal invitation. I got matchsticks in my hand, Les. Odd or even? Odd. Even. <laughs> Too bad, Les. Well, Bonnie, how do you like your steak? Well, I don't... Do you mean real American steak? Well, no, I don't like to brag, but how do you think I keep these boys down here, eh? <laughs> well, I guess I'm staying for dinner. Ah, that's the girl. Mm. Joe Salva. Joe Salva. You're up next. That's you, Les. Oh, no. Joe Salva. Oh, come on, come on. You lost, didn't you? Joe! Hey, Joe! Hiya, Jeff. Over here. Stand by, Joe. Texas is clearing up over the pass. Oh, no. Not me, Papa. Les Loss. I'm having dinner with Miss Lee. Oh, Miss Lee and Mr. Carter. How do you do? Hello. Sorry, Joe. The mail goes on schedule. So does the pilot. Since when? Anyway, I want Les to go to the warehouse, check over the stuff that came in on the boat. Yeah, that's an all-night job. When do you think that up? Just now, since I saw Miss Lee. Now, now, no, look, Jeff. They gambled and he lost. You let him go. Is, uh, is that an order, Dutchie? Yeah. Well, no. Say, who is running things here anyway? Well, that's what I mean. Come on, get going, Joe. Well, what about Miss Lee? Don't worry about Miss Lee. I'll be glad to take up where you left off. Now, look here, mister. I've got something to say about this, you know. Chorus girl? No. I do a specialty. Oh, well, so much the better. Now, pick up that stuff on your way back from Las Cruces, Joe. See you later, Miss Lee. Oh, you will, will you? Now, wait a minute. Say, who does that guy think he is, anyway? That's the boss, as you might have gathered from the conversation. Well, he's not my boss. Well, Bonnie, I hope you win. I'll be seeing you. Goodbye, Joe. No, no, Joe, you be careful. No no chances, hmm? Oh, now, Dutchie, you ought to find something to worry about. Ah, well, that is what you should be doing. Want to watch him take off, Bonnie? Sure. All right. This way. Ooh, how can he fly in this fog? Oh, it's just on the ground. He'll pull right up through this. It's only two or three hundred feet thick. What he's waiting for is the heavy stuff piled up in the pass. Sounds like double talk to me. Mm, the only way of getting inland from here is through a deep pass. It's about 14,000 feet in the low spot. Wind and clouds make it a bad place, so... Well, we keep a lookout partway through to tell us when it clears. Tommy for anchor. Oh, here he comes in now. Go ahead, Tex. Stand by. She's moving fast now. How does it look down there? All right if the wind doesn't shift. Okay, she's open. Let them fly. Okay, Tex. Go ahead, Joe. Okay, 
Come on, come on, get her up, Joe. Oh, wait up. So what? Oh, that's the most wonderful thing I've ever seen. Yeah, I know. Reminded you of a great, big, beautiful bird, didn't it? No, it didn't. It wasn't like a bird at all. That's why it was so wonderful. It was like a flying human being. Well, you're right about one thing. A bird would have too much sense to fly in that kind of muck. All right, Les, get going. Okay, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Hello, kid. Yeah, the wind swung around. It's moving that fog bank in thick as mud. Yeah. Tony, look out. How much time, kid? They better move fast. She's... Go ahead, Jeff. How's it look up in the pass? I was just going to call you. Jeff, you better hold Joe down there for a while. Well, I can't. He's already gone. You ought to be able to see him by now. See him? I can't see the tip of my nose. All right, stand by to put out a flare in case they don't get hold of him. Never mind the flare, Pop. Little Jody heard every word. What'll I do, come back? Jeff, Jeff, is that Joe? What's the matter? Shut up. Yeah, Joe, come on back. But look, it's pretty thick down here. Start letting down. <clears throat> when you get over the fog, I'll line you up and talk you in. Hey, Jeff. What? You tell that beautiful blonde I'm still in the running. Will you stick to business, Joe? <laughs> All I want to do is order a couple of steaks for dinner. How about it, Dutchie? Yeah, yeah, I heard you. Uh, uh, tell him it's all right. It's all right with me, too. All right, Joe. You're all set. Okay. Here I come. Hey, Shorty, plug in that field set. Come on, get going. Yes, Mike, get the big light ready. All right, sir. Turn it straight up. Got a cool out here, Jeff. Here's your coat. Mike, light those tubs. Okay. Joe Souther. Joe Souther. Okay, Jeff. Coming down. On top of the fog at, at 1,500. Hey, that's higher than I thought. Watch carefully, Joe. We're turning on the lights. Turn them on, Mike. Here they go. They are, Joe. Can you see them? No, not a thing. Papa? Hmm. Must be thicker than it looks. Huh? Well, it won't hurt to take a stab at it. Yeah. Hey, Joe. Limp your motor. All right, Joe. You're passing over the field. Now turn 180 degrees and start letting it down and watch for the lights. Yeah, it sounds a little that way. Yeah. Joe, you're a little south. A little south. Okay, Papa. Turning north. Here I come. 1,200. 1,000. 800. 600. Hey, Joe. Joe, you're coming in too high. You'll overshoot the field. Make a turn, Joe. Go further back. Try to get it. Okay, I'm turning. Look, can't you see the lights? Nothing that even looks like a dim candle. Well, this line was okay. Uh-huh. Look, Joe, your direction was perfect. Be sure to keep the same line. All right, Jeff. I'm turning. Here I come. 600. Cut it up in hundreds, Joe. 500. 400. Take it easy, sonny. Take it easy. Shut up. Hmm? 300. Look, gunner, Joe. I'm down to a hundred now, Jeff. There he is. Jeff, he's way off. Go. Go, pull up. Pull up, Jeff. Hey. That wasn't right, was it? No, lady, not quite. Look, Joe. Joe, you had the wrong line. You're way off. Okay, okay, Jeff. I saw the lights. I'll get it next time. Nothing doing, Joe. Don't take any more chances. Now, you've got three hours, Jeff. Three but... hours? Oh, Jeff, she'll almost be on the boat by then. Listen, I told you to stick to business. Now get up on top and cruise around until it opens up down here. That's right, Jeff. Don't let him do it. Oh, uh, Jeff, give me one more chance. I think I see a hole. Yeah, I do see one. Now, Joe. I'm coming down, Jeff. Now, listen, Joe, you've got your orders. Stay up there and quit worrying about that blonde. It's all right, Jeff. I see the lights. I'll make it easy, Jeff. I'll make... Now, listen, Joe. Joe! Joe! Pull up! Pull up! You're heading for the tree! Joe! All right, Mike. Get the wagon. Take along a pair of big shears in case you have to cut him out. Les, you get the mail. Hey, Mike. Yeah? Telephone the police. Tell them to clear the field. Keep it that way. Hurry up. Okay. Well, you did the best you could, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Wise Guy up there. Wouldn't listen to me. Well, do something. Do something. He may be alive. Don't just stand there. Shut up. Cut it out. Haven't you caused enough trouble? He's dead. Calling Baranka. Calling Baranka. Calling Baranka. Go ahead. Jeff. Did you get 
Joe down all right? Yeah. All except for one tree that stuck up too high. Sorry. Where's that drink, Pancho? Go right away, senor. How's it look outside, kid? That's clearing up a little. Okay. Mr. Carter. Yeah? Mr. Carter, do you think... I mean, uh, do you think that it was my fault what happened out there? Sure, it was your fault. You were going to have dinner with him. The Dutchman hired him. I sent him up on schedule. The fog came and the tree got in the way. Sure, it's all your fault. Forget it unless you want the honors. Hiya, Jen. Hiya, Jen. I just got back here. I missed all the excitement around here. you did. Yeah, you won't see a better one in a long time. Yeah, she's a good one, all right. Yeah, gangway, please. Here is your stick, senorita. Here's the other one. Who wants it, huh? Put it down here, Panjo. Si, senor. Hey, that looks all right. How can you do that? Do what? Eat that steak. What's the matter with it? It was his. Look, what do you want me to do? Have it stuffed? Haven't you any feelings? Don't you realize he's dead? Who's dead? Yeah, who's dead? Joe. Joe? Who's Joe? Anybody know a Joe? What's the matter with you? He was sitting here with us talking and laughing just a few minutes ago, and now... Just oh, just bring, bring the news to mother and tell her there's no other. Oh, you... <laughs> well, how do you like that? Hey, wait a minute, you little fool. Why don't you use your head? I don't know how you can act like this. Why, that poor kid, he was... Yeah, I know. He's dead. Yes, he's dead. That's right. and He's been dead for about 20 minutes. And all the weeping and waiting in the world won't make him any deader 20 years from now. If you feel like bawling, how do you think we feel? Oh, I'm sorry. All right, now, come on. Go on outside. Walk around the state there until you put all that together. Yeah, sure, because the thing comes down. Hello, miss. Was that you that were rising in there? Well, don't feel too bad about it. I did the same thing myself when I first came down here. Say, mister, can you kick real hard? <laughs> well, maybe you won't need it. Oh, I think I'd feel better. Does this sort of thing happen very often? Oh, that depends on weather and luck. We've drawn spades twice in the last three months, uh, not counting this one. I suppose they'll be at it again tomorrow. Tonight, if it clears. They must love it, flying on each. Sure. Well, why do you think they come down to this kind of a place? Like being in love with a buzzsaw. Yeah, there's not much future in it. What is there about it that gets them? Well, I'm not a flyer myself. I'm the radio operator. Here, you better ask the kid. Miss Lee, Mr. Dan. How do you do? She, do you know? she wants to know why you like flying, kid. Well, I've been out of 22 years, Miss Lee. I couldn't give you an answer to make any sense. <laughs> What's so funny about that? That's what my dad used to say. Flyer? No. Trapeze. High stuff. He wouldn't choose a net. Hmm, there's not much future in that, either. Yeah, we found that out. Tell me about this head man, this Jeff. Does he go up, too? Only when he thinks it's too tough for anybody else. Well, that just goes to show you how wrong you can be. The kid could tell you. He's Jeff's best friend. Only thing I can tell you, he's a good guy for gals to stay away from. Thanks. I'll remember that. Excuse me, will you? <laughs> Carter... Hello, what do you want? Well, I've put it all together. <laughs> Grown up yet? I hope so. Well, who's Joe? Never heard of him. Does anyone know the peanut bender? <laughs> Let me at the piano. All right, all together. <laughs> Hi, Dutchie. Goodbye, Miss Lee. Goodbye, Dutchie. Drop in again sometime when you come this way, hmm? Thank you, I will. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mr. Carter. It's too bad Branca is so far from Brooklyn. What's your hurry? It's only a few minutes after 12. Your boat doesn't leave until 4 o'clock. When are you going to get some sleep? Ooh, after your boat sails. Aren't you just wasting your time? <laughs> well, there's a point that's open to argument, huh? Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. What? Those arguments. What's the matter with them? Oh, they're too one-sided. Yeah, well, no hard feelings. <clears throat> You're not even annoyed, are you? Oh, why should I be? Say, what was she like, anyway? Who? That girl that made you act the way you do. 
Mm, mm, a whole lot like you, just as nice, almost as smart. Chorus girl. Only by temperament. Well, at least you choose the type. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, let's sit down. Make yourself comfortable. You're still carrying the torch for her, aren't you? Got a match? Say, don't you ever have any? Nope. Don't believe in laying in the supply of anything. Matches, marbles, money, or women. That's hmm? right. No looking ahead, no tomorrows, just today. That's right. Is that why she gave you the air? Who? That girl. Say, listen, I wouldn't ask any woman to... You can think up more questions. What wouldn't you? What? Ask anybody to do. Did you ever know a woman who didn't want to make plans, map out everything, get it all set? Oh, well, I don't blame them, I guess. It's the only way they can operate. Run a, run a home, have kids. I suppose you think that's a lot easier and less dangerous. Oh, I don't Why? know. I never tried it. Didn't you ask her to? Who? That girl. I told you. I wouldn't ask any woman. What if she were willing to? Yeah, that's what they all say. Women think they can take it, but they can't. The minute you get up in the air, they start calling the airport. And when you get down, you find them waiting for you so scared they hate you inside. What if she was the type that didn't scare so easily? There's no such animal, man. Now, how do you know? Well, the girl I was telling you about came as close to it as anybody I ever met. But one night when I'd been lost in the fog, something like this, radio beam was out, I was glad to get my feet on the ground. What do you think my welcome home speech was? She was hoping I'd crashed. What? That's right. She couldn't stand the gap. Said she'd rather see me dead and have it over with. She told me if I wouldn't quit flying, it was all off. You wouldn't, would you? <laughs> I'm still flying. Wonder what happened to her. Well, I don't know for sure. I heard she married another flyer. Now, is there anything else you'd like to know about me? Would you like to go over to my room? Got some letters from home. Pictures of my father and mother. Pictures of me the first time I went up in the air. Pictures of my first crash. Any pictures of you when you were a baby? No, I don't remember. Do you want to go and look? Sure. Wait a minute. Molly, <laughs> keep on the way we're going. You just follow your nose. We'll take you right to the boat. Oh. I've got to stick around here. Oh, so that's where we were going. Uh-huh. Take care of yourself. But I... Look up here. Goodbye, Bonnie. Goodbye. Oh, Jack. Right, right. Dex just called from lookout. He says the pass is clearing. Did you wake Les up? No, because... Well, Tex says it's nobody's picnic. Yeah. All right, wind up number seven. Put some coffee in it. <laughs> I already did. So long, Bonnie. Have a nice trip. Hey, hey, wait a minute. You going up yourself? Sure. When will you be back? Well, it takes three hours each way. I won't be back until after your boat sails. I'll look you up in New York sometime. What? Sure, I'll see you there. When are you coming? Next week, two o'clock. Hey, I, uh, I'd like that saying goodbye... Let's try it again, huh? So long, Molly. So long. So long. Say, things happen awful fast around here. Uh-huh. Is it going to be dangerous? Well, what do you want to do? Put a net under them? Well, lady, you're really better off this way. Yeah, I guess. Now, look, I hardly know the man. Sure. But you'll get over it. You have just heard Act One of Only Angels Have Wings with Cary Grant, Gene Arthur, Thomas Mitchell, Richard Bothamus, and Rita, Rita Hayworth. During this short intermission, we bring you the Browning family. As the scene opens, we find Dot and Midge just coming home from a shopping trip. They've bought a graduation present for someone. Let's see what it is. Mother. Oh, Mother, look what we got for Mary Lou. See? Here's some lingerie. Isn't it adorable? <laughs> Why, it's as sweet as it can be, and I know Mary Lou will love it. Well, I hope she takes care of, the, care of it. She's so careless with the thing. Oh, the good old Browning trick. We'll send her a jingle like this. These lovely things will wear and wear and keep on looking new. If you'll just give them proper care, and that means lux for you. <laughs> oh, Med, you're a genius, isn't she, Mother? <laughs> she certainly is. And another stroke of genius would be to send a box of Lux Flakes along with your gift. You can depend on the famous Lux promise. It's safe for everything safe in water alone. Lux Flakes float out every trace of perspiration and soil and leave your nice things dainty and new-looking. And they'll stay new-looking a long time with regular Lux care. So buy the thrifty big box of Lux Flakes tomorrow, won't you? And Lux under things after every wearing. Your blouses, dresses, sweaters, and pretty accessories often. And now I see Mr. DeMille is ready to raise the curtain on the second act of our play. 
Act Two of Only Angels Have Wings, starring Cary Grant as Jeff and Gene Arthur as Bonnie Lee, with Thomas Mitchell as a kid, Richard Bartholmus as McPherson, and Rita Hayworth as Judy. Bye. Early the following morning, in the cafe adjoining the landing field, Bonnie is having breakfast. Jeff Carter, returning from his flight, comes through the door. As he sees Bonnie, he stops dead, his eyes glinting coldly. What are you doing here? Having my breakfast. Is your boat still here? No. Has it sailed? Uh-huh. Well, how'd you happen to get left behind? Well, I... I just told the man... Told him what? To put my trunk on the dock. Yeah, Why? Well, I couldn't stay over without having anything to wear now, could I? What's so funny? Doesn't it seem funny to you? What? Getting off that boat, what, doesn't it? Well, I don't know. You know, the girl that got off that boat is a perfect stranger to me. I don't know. I I don't know whether this is me or another fella. You know, by all rights, Bonnie Lee ought to be sound asleep on that boat far out to sea. Yeah, well, she's not so far out to sea as you think. What is it? The boat. Hey, Ted. Yeah. Put some more gas in number seven. Call up Santa Maria. I have to hold the boat till we get there. Well, what are you waiting for? Boat doesn't stop at Santa Maria this trip. Why not? They have no bananas. They have no bananas? Yes, they have no bananas. Oh, shut up. Oh, don't worry, mister. Look, you don't have to bother about me. I'm cured. I suppose there's a first time for everything. What do you mean? Well, I've never made quite such a chump out of myself. I'm sorry, I... No, I'm not either. I'm glad. You're not making sense. You're telling me. If I'd taken that boat, I'd have gone out of here remembering a swell guy, someone who lived up to a screwy ideal. That... Look, I didn't ask you to stay. I wouldn't ask any woman. I know. You wouldn't ask any woman to do anything. That's right. And what's more, there's something else I wouldn't do. What? Get burned twice in the same place. There's another boat leaving next week. I'll be on it. Good. Who? That new flyer you sent for. His name's McPherson. Yeah, where is he? Outside with the boys. You, you want him in here? No, I'll go out. All right. Where have you been flying, McPherson? Mexico City. What kind of stuff they're using down there? Oh, a lot of crates. Hello, mister. Oh, hello. You caught her? Yeah. Yeah, but you're not McPherson. Your name's Kilgallen. Kilgallen? Hey, what is this, Jeff? You heard him. That Kilgallen? That's right. What of it? He's not the first guy that came down here under a different name. No, but he's the first pilot who ever bailed out of his plane and let his mechanic crash. Why, the dirty... Cut it out, Jan. Look, did you know the kid was working down here at Kilgallen? What? He is. <laughs> I don't think there's anything funny about that. You're right. There isn't. But I had to come a long way to find it out. Yeah, but what's the kid got to do with it? Nothing, except it was the kid's younger brother that was killed when this guy took to his parachute. <laughs> oh. Jeff... There's the kid now. He's coming down. Right. With... Mm. Mm. Listen, brother. You better make yourself scarce, because for your information, the kid carries a gun. Aren't you getting kind of careful of me all of a sudden? I'm not thinking about you, but it's going to be inconvenient for me if they slap the kid in the hoosgow. I'll have to meet him sooner or later, won't I? Mm. Well, maybe you're right. It's your own funeral. It's hot down here on the ground. Hey, give me some water, will you, Baldy? Yeah. Let's get a match. There you go. What's the matter? like walking in a graveyard. Oh, hello. You the new guy? Welcome to our city. My name... Hello, kid. Kill Gallon. Long time no see. That's right. I thought there was something... Cigarette, kid? Huh? Here. Oh, I'm all right. Kill Gallon? Two years ago at a brook, you... Keep out of my sight. I might still do it. Well, that's none of my business, Jeff. But I don't know why you'd stopped him. All right. It's none of your business. Oh, Beth. Oh, Judy, come here. I, I want you to meet these people. Gentlemen, this is Mrs. McPherson. Mr. Shelton is my name. Mr. Shelton? This is Les Peters. How do you do? Mr. Peters? And this is Jeff Carter. Jeff. Oh, how do you do? Mm. Mrs. McPherson. I'm... I'm sorry, Bat, but I forgot to ask you for the trunk key. Oh, yeah, you did. I'm afraid that I interrupted something. Not at all. Now, here you are now. Run along. I'll... I'll see you in a few minutes. 
I'm glad to have met everyone. I know what you're thinking. No, she doesn't know about me. Come inside, Kilgallen. Jeff. You're not going to put this man to work. That's none of your business either. No, no, no. Wait a minute, Jeff. Who's running this airline, Dutchie? Uh, you are. Well, that's what I mean. Come on, Kilgallen. But but you don't seem to remember that. Sit down. You do some queer things, Kilgallen. McPherson's the name. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Why didn't you tell your wife what you've done? Ah, uh, let's get this over with. When does the next boat leave? <laughs> Have you got enough dough for your passages? No. Oh, that's fine. Uh, I wonder if I could. What? Cram you down their throats. <laughs> that bunch of them? I wouldn't mind choking a few of them. Hello? Carter speaking. Jeff, this is Grant Hardwood. Hello, Mr. Hardwood. I'm speaking from the mine, Jeff. My boy's hurt bad. What's the matter? We don't know. But I've got to get him out of here. At least bring a doctor in. You mean fly a doctor up to the mine? Yes. Oh, we can't set a plane down there. There's no room. It's practically suicide. Uh, Jeff, you've got to. You can write your own ticket. I'll take full responsibility for the plane. You will? Wait a minute. Hey, Kid Gillen, you want a chance? What do you think? I'm not promising hey, you a job. Nice At least you'll make you know, a passenger. Josh, AKA That's all right with me. Good. Mr. Hartwood, you've got a deal. Oh, uh, thanks, Jeff. A plane will be up there in a couple of hours. I hope. All right, Kid Gillen, you take a doctor into a boy who's hurt. It's a bad place to get into, but worse to get out. Have you got a map? Yeah, it's here. And when you land, you better come in short or you'll run out of ground because there's a big drop all around there. Well, are you ready? Sure. And, uh... Thanks. Thanks? For what? Uh, Jeff. Oh, come in, kid. Hey, Mike tells me that guy Kilgallen took off an hour ago. You're not putting him to work, are you? We'll talk about that later. Sit down. Take a look at that chart over there, kid. Huh? Why? You give me an eye test? Yeah, read that fourth line. <laughs> uh, you're not worried about my eyes, are you? Just because I didn't recognize that guy Kilgallen right off? Quit stalling, kid. Read it. L-P-E-D. Hmm, that's very good. Sure, I could have told you. Stay there. Wait a minute. I got a new chart. Oh, here. Fourth line on this card. P-D-E-O. Try the fifth. Uh, F, uh, Z, B, D, E. Why, that's better than I can do. Well, that's that. Now, what about Kilgallen? He's not staying here, is he? Mm hmm. Why not? Why not? Thought you'd be the last guy on earth to ask me that. He's no good, and you know it. Why, he's. Take it easy, take it easy. He's no good. You think he's any worse than the guy who double crossed his best friend? Huh? Look, kid, I don't care about myself. Anything you do is all right with me. But if the Dutchman loses another plane, he's cooked. Cooked? Well, I thought it was rolling that dough. Yeah? Why do you think that new plane is still down there on the dock? Yeah, you know, I wonder about that. Well, it's because he hasn't got enough dough to pay the freight. Look, kid, here it is. Dutchie made an agreement that if... that if he could get the mail out of here twice a week on schedule for six months, he'd not only get a long, long contract, but a government subsidy, too. Do you know what that would mean? Plenty of money around here. No more second-hand junk to fly. No more pass to monkey with. Why, these new jobs can get over the top of those peaks in any kind of weather. Yeah, that would be nice. When did the schedule start? Six months ago. Oh, well, then you're... Only one more week, or at least until the northbound boat arrives. Oh. That's why you've been forcing things, huh? Uh-huh. Well, why didn't you tell a fella? <laughs> Dutchy. Dutchy? Why? Well, he was afraid if you guys knew the spot he was in, you'd start taking unnecessary chances. <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you're right about my eyes. I couldn't see those cards. I learned them by heart. Mm-hmm. What about the new one? Thought you told me where you hit it. <laughs> oh, the old fool, double crossing himself. Ah, uh, he wasn't thinking about that. He was thinking how you'd feel, grounding me. Yeah. You're through flying, kid. Uh huh. After twenty years. Well, I guess that's long enough for anybody. You're gonna need that kill gallon, aren't you? I might. I'm thinking of keeping him on. Well, if you do, you can forget how I feel about him. Thanks. And, uh, look, kid, there's a lot of things you can do around here to help me, you know. Uh, oh, sure, sure. I can help Mike. I can... I can, uh... Oh, sure. See you later. Huh? Calling Baraka. McPherson, calling Baraka. Go ahead. We got out all right. All in one piece. 
I'm on my way home. What do you want me to do? Pat you on the back? Signing off. Morning, kid. Oh, hello, Bonnie. How you doing? Oh, not so bad. After spending a night in that mouse auditorium I'm sleeping in. <laughs> just about room enough for me and a foot gun. Well, I thought we fixed you up in a pretty good room. You did. Mr. Carter had other ideas. He gave my place to McPherson and his wife. Oh. Well, you warned me. Say, uh, isn't that girl the one you used to be in love with? Bonnie, when it rains, every third drop falls on one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I can believe that, all right. Come right out of the woodwork. Well, more power to him. Oh, sure. Say, you don't think I care about him? Uh-huh. Well, I don't, see? I just like to tell him what I think about him, that's all. All you have to do is raise your voice a little. Is that him flying up there? The old master himself. What's he doing? Well, he's testing an old smashed up plane that Mike stuck together with a little glue. Or did you use bailing wire this time, Mike? Don't worry, those wings will stay on all right. We'll I soon see. He's high enough. Here he comes. What's the devil? Hey, hey, he's spinning. He's not trying to do that. I can't see. What's happened, Mike? Windshield gave way. Must have hit something. Was I out of control? Pull her out, Cap. Pull her out. Now's your time, Step. Come on, come on, get out. Jump. Jump. Jim, what's he doing? He's trying. He's going to try to land. He can't make it. Mike. Mike gets set for a crash. Not with that tail smash, not in a million years. Start that truck. Why doesn't he jump? Why? Why should he jump? He's made of rubber. He is. He wants to hit the ground and see how high he can bounce. Stop it, stop it. There he comes. You'll make it, won't you? I don't know. I don't know. Well, he'll come as close as anyone. There he goes. Look at that guy. Kid. Hold that truck. Okay. I'm getting too old for this sort of thing. Yeah, he's okay, Bonnie. Oh. Oh, kid. Shut up. That's flying, you fool. That's what you've been asking for, isn't it? You see what you're up against? See how little he cares about you, about me, or about anybody? All he's worried about is to get that crate on the ground in one piece. Kid. Kid. What's the matter? I don't know. I'm... I feel kind of sick. Oh, hey. All right, all right. Now, take it easy. Take it. Take it easy. Mike, come in. Sure. Here. This is good for your stomach, but it won't help much for what ails you. You didn't tell him what a baby I was. No. Uh, skip that one. You won't tell him, will you? After that st sample, you still get your chin out for more? Oh, I know I'm a fool, but... There isn't anything I can do about it. Well, he won't quit flying, Bonnie. I wouldn't ask him to. No. You don't believe that, do you? Well, you'd have a hard time making him believe it. Think you could take that sort of thing day after day? You love him, don't you, kid? <laughs> yeah, I guess I do. Why can't I love him the way you do? Why couldn't I sneer when he tries to kill himself? Feel proud when he doesn't. Why couldn't I be there to meet him when he comes back? Why couldn't... What do you do when he doesn't come back when you expect him to? <laughs> I go nuts. Gee whiz, you're a great help. Calling Baraka. McPherson, calling Baraka. Go ahead, McPherson. Over the pass. How's your weather, good or bad? Looks like there's a chance to get through. I didn't ask you that. Is it good or bad? Well, it's bad. But I can make it. All right, tell the one who's in it. Use your own judgment. Hello, Judy. Jeff, I'd like to talk to you. Why, what's on your mind? Jeff, I just heard the bat was carrying nitroglycerin. Oh, now don't worry, Judy. He's pretty good, you know. Yes, I know. But it's dangerous. Oh, no, not as long as you're in the air, it isn't. How could you be like that with me? Why does he always get things like this to do? Oh, now, Judy. Oh, please, Jeff. I told you I was happy. But I lied to you. Why don't people want to work with him? What's he done that makes people act the way they well, do? Why ask me? Well, you're the only one I can ask. 
Oh, it was the same at the last place. Everything was all right, and then he... He met someone he knew. Oh, what makes him act that way? Well, you'd think he was a leper or something. Oh, please, Jeff, I've got to know. Can't you see that? No. No. But... Did you ever hear of the word trust? I did once. I, I don't forgot. blame him for not telling you. Maybe he wanted to find out what he'd got. You're no good, Judy. You never were. What have I done? Why do you have to know all about him? If it's so bad he can't tell you, how do you think he feels? Why didn't you think of his side of it? No, you're just like all of them. You don't know what it means to stick. You never will. Jeff. Good night, Judy. Hey. Hey. Hey, what is all this? Hello. What's what? What do you think you're doing in my room? And what's all this cooking? Well, that's coffee. Don't touch it. It's hot. I told you so. Let me see. Oh, cut it out. out. Oh, that is a burn. I'll put some butter on it. I don't want any butter on it. It'll make it feel better. I don't want any butter on it. My grandmother always used butter. I don't care what your grandmother... What's all this about? Well, I thought I'd like to have a nice cup of coffee. It's so cold and rainy outside and so nice and warm and cozy in here. Don't you want one, too? No, I don't. And stop making a lunch stand out of my place. Now, take this thing out of... I thought you never did that. Did what? Get burned twice in the same place. <laughs> Can I sit down for a while? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Go ahead. Where do you keep those pictures? What pictures? Those pictures of you when you were a baby. Mm-hmm. They're right back where we started, aren't we, Bonnie? Oh, that was a million years ago. I know you're a lot better now. Uh, you're a queer duck, Bonnie. So are you. Come here. Hey, you're all right, Bobby. Jeff, you don't have to be afraid of me anymore. I'm not trying to tie you down. I don't want a plan. I don't want to look ahead. I don't want to change anything. I love you, Jeff. Nothing I can do about it. I just love you, that's all. I feel the same way about you the kid does. Anything you do is all right with me. A kid? Yeah. He doesn't ask you for anything or get in your way, bother you, does he? He drives me nuts. Hey, Jeff! Oh. Jeff! Uh... Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Come in, come in. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sure, come in. We might as well be in the Grand Central Station. You know, I could have made a fortune tonight with a hot dog stand right here. Oh, I'm sorry, Bonnie. Hey, Jeff, the new ship's okay. We've just been testing the motors. Hey, you mean she's ready to fly? Sure. What good is it going to do you and this kind of stuff? Well, even if the pass is closed in, she's still got a chance. Chance for what? Taking that mail right over the top. Over the whole thing? Oh, she ought to get high enough. Uh-huh. All right, we'll see. You're going to try it, aren't you? Yeah, if the boat gets in with the mail. The boat's late. Well, she still might make it. I'll go out and get the feel of the ship. Jeff. Sorry, Bonnie, this has got to be done. Oh, uh, oh, uh, here. Here, Bonnie. Uh, see if you can find it. It's somewhere there in that box. What? That, uh, that picture we were talking about. And, uh, and, uh, keep the coffee warm, will you? Tell on, Bonnie. Yep. Yeah. Do you think that, uh, do you suppose... You ever pray, Bonnie? Just pray that that boat don't get in till this storm's over. for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. We bring down the curtain on the second act of Only Angels Have Wings, starring Cary Grant and Gene Arthur with Thomas Mitchell, Richard Bothamus, and Rita Hayworth. During our short intermission, we introduce our guest for the evening. But first, may I remind housewives that Lux is the thrifty way to do dishes. Yes, about a penny's worth of Lux flakes, unless the water is hard, will do your dishes for a whole day and leave your hands lovely looking, too. In hard water, a little extra Lux softens the water and gives an abundance of suds. 
Next time you order, order Lux, remember, a little goes so far, it's thrifty. And buy an extra large size box for your dishes. Here's Mr. DeMille with the prelude to our special guest. For drama and excitement, tonight's play has a real-life parallel in the history-making flight completed Saturday when the Yankee Clipper of Pan American Airways returned to New York after inaugurating regular commercial airline service across the Atlantic to Europe. The huge Boeing plane capable of carrying 72 passengers stopped at the Azores, Portugal, France, and England, spanning nearly 10,000 miles in seven days. At the controls of the ship, commanding a crew of 14, was tonight's guest, Captain Arthur E. Laporte. Veteran of more than half a million miles of ocean flying, he has flown the Pacific 50 times. He made the initial survey flight of the Amazon River and commanded the first air mail flight between Manila and Hong Kong. With congratulations on his latest superb achievement, the Lux Radio Theater goes to New York to welcome Captain Laporte. America salutes you, Captain Laporte. We're in Hollywood again, where Cary Grant and Gene Arthur bring us Only Angels Have Wings, with Thomas Mitchell, Richard Bartlemus, and Rita Hayworth. The storm still rages over Barranca, but the mail boat has arrived on schedule, and Jeff is ready to take off into the thunder-ridden sky. In the operations office, the kid pleads desperately to go with him. Okay, I can now, look here, Jeff. I know. I heard you the first time. But, Jeff! You're not going, kid. Now, well, forget it. Why not? Forget it. Tell you what. I'll toss your coin for it. Heads, I go. Huh? Watch. Hey! Get... <laughs> no, no. Get away look out. Come on. Get away. Come on. Come on, Jeff. It. Got... Give me that doll, all right? Shut up. Shut... What are you so anxious for? What... Well, what do you think of that? Well, that's a nice dollar, kid. It's heads on both sides. <laughs> No kidding. Is it really? Is it really? Yes. No wonder I've been buying your drinks all year. Hey, Jeff. I want to go with you. Please. Uh, okay, if you feel that way about it. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, give me my dollar. Come on, give me, give me. It's lucky. <laughs> yeah, well, you better put another bottle of oxygen in the ship. I already did. <laughs> See you on the field. Hello. Hello, Bonnie. Excuse me, will you? Hello, Bonnie. What's that you've got? Oh, I started that lunch wagon we were talking about. Be careful of the coffee. It was boiling hot when I put it in the box. So don't burn yourself again. <laughs> Thanks, I won't. Have a nice trip, Jeff. See you next week, two o'clock. Hey, where are you going? Over to the room. What for? Oh, my boat's in. I've got to finish packing. Oh, yeah? Um, uh, say, uh, isn't that the outfit you came ashore in? <laughs> now, how did you remember that? I don't know. Got a match? Hey, don't you think it's about time you started carrying... Oh, I'm sorry, Jeff. I'm sorry to be so silly. I wanted to do this just the way you... I know. Sure. So long, Bonnie. Jeff, I can't let you go. Oh, now, look, darling. This has got to stop. No. No, I can't. Stay where you are, Jeff. Wait a minute. What do you mean, swiping that gun from me? Give me back that gun. I won't let you go. You're not going to go, Jeff. You're going to stay right here. I won't let you kill yourself. Hmm. You're going to do it to keep me from doing it, huh? Well, well, Bonnie. You're just like all the rest. Oh, Jeff. Don't go, please. Oh, come on. Give me that gun, Bonnie. Jeff, I... Jeff! Well. <laughs> that's fine. Oh, Jeff. Oh, Jeff. Go away, Bonnie. Go away. Oh, darling, darling, I didn't mean to. I know you didn't. It was my own fault. I should have known better. Hey, what goes on? He's shot. Yeah, in the shoulder. It's okay. Where's the first aid, Fox? Yeah, over there in the corner. Hey, did, did you send for the doctor? Not yet. Well, get him right away. Who did it? I did. You? How did it happen? I didn't want him to go. Yeah, well, he's not likely to go now. Gina, she looks bad. Come on, come on, come on. What is this? A sideshow? Clear out of here. Go on. No, no, don't get excited, Grandpa. How's it look to you? Well, it's all right, but you're not going to do much flying with it. You're crazy. Am I? Try to move it. <laughs> you see? Now, you could join the rest of us cripples. Oh, that's perfect. Say, you don't think I can fly it alone, do you? No, you're not good enough alone, kid. Well, I'm a lot better than anyone else you got around here. Can I come in? Sure. <laughs> Meet the new cripple, McPherson. Yeah, I heard about it. Who's flying the mail? I was going to. How are you going to get through that stuff? Over the top of the new trimotor. Will she go that high? I don't know. I can find out. No, no, you don't have to go, McPherson. It's not that kind of job. 
Well, that's fair enough. I'll see you out in the field in five minutes, kid. Yeah, I'll be waiting for you. Calling McPherson. Branca, calling McPherson. Calling McPherson. Oh, why don't they answer? They ought to be over the mountains by now. Calling McPherson. Calling McPherson. Uh, I see. Kid, calling McPherson. Uh, there, there you are. Go ahead, kid. Say, Sparks. Tell Jeff we couldn't make it. Got almost 16,000 in the bottom fell out. All right, tell him to come on back. Heard you, Jeff. Not coming back. We're going through the pass. Give me that thing. Uh, don't be foolish, kid. Tech says it's closed in tight. Turn around and come back. Those are orders, you hear? Good dice, Jeff. Signing off. Tell Tex to watch for him. Calling lookout. Go ahead, Sparks. Tex, watch for number four. They're going to try to pass. This one by here trying to down and thinning their way. I tried to talk to them, but they wouldn't answer me. Keep trying. Okay. Oh, I'll kill that kid when he gets back. I'll... I'll... Baranka. Calling Baranka. Baranka, go ahead. Who was that? Uh, sounded like McPherson. McPherson, go ahead. Baranka. Calling Baranka. Go ahead, go ahead. What's the matter? This is McPherson. Bird just smashed in the windshield. It got the kit. What? Say it again. Windshield smashed. It got the kit. I'm turning back. Uh, those condors flying in the pass, one of them must have smashed through the windshield. Call him McPherson. Hello, McPherson. They're awful heavy, those birds. If it hit the kit, yeah. you know. McPherson. Look out, calling Baranka. Go ahead, Tex. No force on fire. Left out board nose motor. They're headed back to you and I don't think they can make it. Get going, Mike. Plug in that outside set. In no time, Jeff. Calling number four. Calling number four. Look. There they are. They're coming in. They'll never get her down, Jeff. Hey, kid. Kid. Number four. Jump. Bail out. Bail out. He's going to try to make it. Bail out, McPherson. Bail out. Bail out. <laughs> Okay, Doc, that's fine. That's fine. Cut it out now. Come on. Jeff, tell this guy to quit fussing with me, will you? I'm all right. Leave him alone, Doc. Go on. Cigarette, Pop. Sure. Here you are, fellow. How's McPherson? Hands burned. One side of his face. It's all right, Jeff. Could have jumped, but he didn't. Just sat there and took it like it was an ice cream soda. Buy him a drink for me, will you? Sure, I will. You know, if it hadn't been for those birds, we'd have made it. Sure, you would. Might design a windshield at an angle. Then they bounce off. Mm, not a bad idea. Make your present of it, Papa. When I get on my feet, we'll work it out. Huh? Or will we? Mm, uh, your neck's broken, kid. Funny. No wonder I couldn't feel anything. Well, I guess this is it, huh? Hurry up. Go on, get out of here. You too, Doc. You close me. Come on, what is it, kid? You can tell me. I didn't want them to see me. I'm not afraid, Jeff, but I just didn't want them to see me. Sure, I know. It's like it's like doing something new, you know. It's like my first solo. I didn't want anyone watching me then either. I don't know how good I'll be at this. Look, you want me to get out too? I'd hate to pull a boner in front of you, Jeff. Sure. Sure, fella. I'll go. Well, uh... So long, kid. So long, Jeff. 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 Yeah? The kid's gone. How's bad? Okay. The guys think he's okay, too. That's good. Look, the, the kid wanted to buy me a drink. Do it, will you? Sure. Oh, Jeff, here's all the kid's stuff. Just a lot of junk. Only cash was a phony dollar. <laughs> Anything you want in here? No. I don't need nothing to remember him by. Mm, a knife, keys, a picture, two cents, and a phony dollar. <laughs> Not much to show for 22 years, has it? Well, I got to get back to the desk. Hello, Jeff. Hello, Bobby. I, uh, I thought I ought to 
Well, the Dutchman said that uh, he thought that before I go, I'd better... Gee, I don't know what to say. All, all I wanted to say was, Jeff, Jeff, you're crying. Oh, please don't. I'll never be able to... Never be able to what, Bonnie? I'll never be able to say it. Say what? I was going to say goodbye. Jeff, do you want me to stay or don't you? Well, Bonnie... And... Calling for anchor. Wait a minute. Calling for anchor. Go ahead, Tex. Storm's breaking up. Yeah? Wind's dropping down, no whisper. Hey, Jeff. I got yeah. it. Wind up number seven. Uh, Mike, start at number seven. Jeff, get the sweater. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. The pants are clearing, Dutchie. We just got time to make it. Well, who's going to fly it? I got one good arm, haven't I? But, Jeff, you can't uh, do it. Dutchie, you can't bring the goodies in the bag. Come on, Jeff. So long, Bonnie. Keep that coffee while I'll be back for breakfast. I won't be here. I'm going on the boat. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Nobody's asked me to stay. What? They haven't? No. You wouldn't ask anybody to do anything, would you? Oh, that's right. Here. We'll flip a coin. Tickles you go. Heads you stay. Hey, all right, heads. What about it? I won't stay that way. You won't? I'm hard to get, Jeff. All you have to do is ask me. <laughs> Here's a little souvenir for you, Bonnie. It belongs to the kid. I like that saying goodbye. Goodbye, Bonnie. A souvenir. A souvenir. That's great. That... Hey. Hey. Hey, Jeff. Jeff, this dollar. Jeff, it's, it's heads on both sides. I know it. Oh, Jeff. You. Jeff. <laughs> Curtain falls on Act Three of Only Angels Have Wings. Our stars return for their curtain calls in just a moment. But first, I'd like to make a timely suggestion. This season, shorter skirts and shoes with cut-out toes and heels make stockings more important than ever. So, more than ever, you want to cut down on runs and holes in your stockings, don't you? And Lux Flakes can help you there. You see, Lux saves the elastic, springy quality in your stockings. The threads give under strain instead of breaking into runs or holes so easily. And, of course, elasticity makes your stockings fit better, too. So they look smoother and more flattering. It's wise and smart and thrifty to give your stockings regular Lux care. Keep the generous large size box of Lux Flakes in the bathroom and Lux stockings after every wearing. Mr. DeMille. Dropping out of the skies and leaving Waranka far behind them, come Jeff Carter and Bonnie Lee, this time as Cary Grant and Jean Arthur. Tonight's play brought up a point that he's always interested in, you should know. Maybe you and Carrie can answer. What is it that makes men like Jeff Carter and the kids go to places like the Rockies to try to shove their friends through fog and over mountains? They don't do it for their health, or for money, or for fame. What is it that, that, that why do they keep at it? Well, I think the best answer was right in the play, Jim. When you asked the kid why he flew, and he said he didn't know. Is that your opinion, too, Mr. Smith? Well, there's another way of looking at it. Years ago, especially in this country, there were things to be done. Territory to be settled, gold to be fought, engines to be licked, <coughs> railroads to be built. And a hundred things that could satisfy a man who had sand in his shoes and a bee in his bonnet. Today, all those things have been done. But men still have the same urge to, to be doing things that are a little different. And a little dangerous, perhaps. And they're lost in the modern world until they find an outlet. This is the urge, I think, that puts some men behind the controls of airplanes. It puts others in submarines. Some it sends to the South Pole, and some it sends to jail. And uh, what could be done about it, Dr. DeMille? <laughs> well, it's a, it's a big problem, Gary. Maybe nothing has to be done about it right now. H however, I suggest we talk about something else. Carrie and I think there's some special thanks to people who work for us on the air tonight in the picture. Tommy Mitchell, Richard Barton, Miss Rita Hayworth, and all the others. To them and to you, our sincere gratitude. Good night. So long, CB. Thank you, Jean. Happy landing, pilot. Listen for the grand news coming shortly from Mr. DeMille about the stars and play you'll hear next week. Tonight's cast included Lou Merrill as Duchy. Alan Ladd as Les, John Allen as Gent, and Herbert Vigran as Mike. 
Frank Capra directs the new Columbia Pictures starring Gene Arthur and Thomas Mitchell. At the same studio, Cary Grant soon starts another Hawks-directed film, tentatively called The Bigger They Are. Louis Silvers appeared through courtesy of 20th Century Fox Studio, where he was in charge of music for the new picture, Young Mr. Lincoln. Be sure to listen to the new Lux daytime radio program, The Life and Love of Dr. Susan. The makers of Lux Flakes bring you this enthralling story about the love and problems of a young, attractive woman doctor every afternoon, Monday through Friday. Look in your newspapers for the time and station. The Life and Love of Dr. Susan comes to you in addition to the Lux Radio Theater. Mr. DeMille. Next Monday night, the Lux Radio Theater brings you a distinguished artist and a stirring play. Mr. Ronald Coleman in The Prisoner of Zender. As a novel and a drama, this classic enjoyed enormous success, duplicated when Mr. Coleman and Selznick International Studios brought it to the screen. Mr. Coleman will repeat his film, his film role for us and will be joined by two other celebrities from the picture cast. Douglas Fairbanks, Jr., and C. Aubrey Smith. And with them, uh, Benita Hume and Ralph Forbes. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Ronald Coleman, Douglas Fairbanks, Jr., C. Aubrey Smith, Benita Hume, and Ralph Forbes in The Prisoner of Zender. Mr. Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood.